Hey everyone, Neelay Patel here, and I am the owner and designer at Silver Silk and more. Now tonight's project, um, before I get to the drawing, is I actually received some new stuff from Jesse James Beads. This is their Pantone trend for the fall and winter season. So this is the first um, bit of the collection sh that I received. So normally how this works is that there are two strands custom that are created. Um, this is sort of the blues and I guess there's a specific color to this. Bluestone, that's it. Names on the back. <laughs> uh, Bluestone is the one of the fall color colors of Pantone. Beautiful mix of beads though. I mean, you got these really great acrylic boho beads, some glass beads in here. You get this giant chunk of a crystal for uh, this other strand. So really great collection of pieces there. Um, along with it, you get an inspirational bead mix, and this has larger components. So if you kind of think about it in terms of uh, size-wise, you get two strands that are probably more so your medium-sized beads, and then you get a package of larger components and elements. Um, for example, you get this great pendant, you get some, large, whoops, some larger beads, some cool little crystals, and then you get a package with smaller components that look like this. So I'm just gonna get it out of the packaging. Ooh, look at that, you got a head of teal. Sent me another mix that I'm going to show you quickly, but I'll go through in a different video. But this other one is called Eden, which is great because it does have that green lush um, feel to it. And I think that that's such a beautiful um, component. What are we going to do with this tonight? Good question. I have some lovely acrylic chain that looks like this. Now this is gigantic and super lightweight. Look how great that looks. So I thought we would figure out a way to combine this and some silver capture chain, which I have a ton of right here. If you are not familiar with what capture chain is, it is a knitted wire chain, jewelry chain. The interior is made of this beautiful little string of round beads, kind of like a ball chain almost, if you can kind of pull it apart there, um, as you can see. And then knitted over that is 34 gauge wire. It is machine knit, so it's very, very specific, very well made, very high end. Um, and because it is knitted the way that it is, it's super flexible. As you can see, I can wrap it around my finger. Um, another aspect to this is that the end is actually knitted in such a way that it doesn't fray. So you can literally just cut this any way that you want to, and um, it, won't, it won't start to unravel on you. Um, the wire also itself has a special coating so that it is tarnish resistant. Um, highly recommend still yet with any of my jewelry pieces, I end up putting them in a Ziploc bag. And I'm also one of those weird people that labels them too, like necklace, you know, done on such and such date. So, because that's my OCD. <laughs> but um, if you think about it, you're probably going to wear the pieces more than I will. Um, so I catalog mine in case I ever need to take it out for examples or trade shows and stuff. But you guys don't have to do that, obviously. But I would recommend putting in some sort of a bag um, that is airtight, Ziploc bag or whatnot. That way it's just that extra little bit of security knowing that it won't tarnish. As I said, I have that beautiful acrylic chain that I wanna use. So maybe we add that in at the bottom. Make that a little bigger. I think that's a great visual weight. Um, and the color is so light that you could literally go crazy with it and it's not gonna look and feel as heavy as you think it would. I'm gonna use my capture chain here at the top I don't know how elaborate I want to go tonight. I'm kind of feeling more on the simple side, but still something very textural. So designs don't have to be complicated necessarily, as long as you figure out a great way to uniquely connect your components together. It should be still pretty great looking. Um, what I want to do down here is I've got all these like gigantic, beautiful beads, right? So maybe we add in our pendant down here. 
And maybe we do something with the beads here. I don't know if we just end up connecting a bunch together to make something fun and crazy cool. Maybe we graduate them so that we have less beads going up. I don't know. I think some things can happen there. So that might be a fun way to approach this design. So I've got this chain and I need a determined length of my design. So I kind of want a pretty petite necklace tonight. I think the beads and stuff are going to speak pretty much a lot <laughs> with, uh, with the design. So I think I'm going to cut it right there. And here's the thing with acrylic chain. You don't actually have to cut it. It's got a little like, I don't know, a little seam inside of it that you can actually remove fairly easily. There we go. So the great thing is your links are never going to be wasted. There we go. And what I need are some double strand end caps. So I have these. These are my custom made double strand end caps. And these are so cool because you don't need any special items to make these work. What this is, is a two channel little component. It's got teeth on the inside of it. And so whenever you are securing the ends of your knitted wire, in this case, all you need to do is just roll this up in your thumb and index finger and basically just push it in as far as you can. Kind of can hold it in place with your thumb and index finger all together. And then what you do is use Grab it. What I like to use is a nylon jaw plier, and I like to make sure that my jaws are kind of scraped up because it gives me a little bit more of a um, little bit more of a grip on this. All you do is just press it down. Very very easy. Um, as you can see, I didn't use any glue. I didn't use any other special tools. Just give it a good press, and believe it or not, that holds it in place. Now, why I use nylon jaw pliers is because I don't want to. Um, mark or nick or do anything to my beautiful little silver finding. Um, this keeps it nice and professional looking and I wanna make sure that it does stay as beautiful as it as I can keep it. Look at that, easy peasy. Oh, let's get creative. We could actually put a bead here, okay? Yes, I don't know, if that, that might be a little bit much. Um, let's do this one, it's kinda nice. Stu, I'm feeling like light and soft today. I don't know why I'm feeling light and soft, but we are. Um, I have 22 gauge craft wire. And I'm going to go ahead and take that out. Perfect. And I'm going to make some simple loops, or rather maybe some wire wrap loops I think would be better. So let me just do these real quick. I feel like there's a billion tutorials on wire wrap loops. Um, so I probably won't focus on that too much tonight. But again, if your wire, roop, uh, wire, roops, wire loops are looking uh, messy. I encourage just taking some scrap wires and just making a bunch. I used to have my students do that all the time. And believe it or not, that discipline definitely helped with the final product. There we go. All right, string this guy on. And then we'll make a bigger loop for this part down here. Although, I wonder if I need to actually even make a loop. Because I bet what I can do is actually just fold the wire up. Like so. Either way, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to leave it as that. There we go. It will want to slip out of, whoops, as it did, that little slot right there, but let's tighten it too much. Whoopsie. 
Let's take this back out. Good thing I didn't cut it. <laughs> Here we go. I'm just gonna straighten this back out. The craft wire is really actually very soft, the one by Softflex wire. So actually what I'm gonna do is turn this around that way I don't have that little slip there. And then I'm going to now make my wire up loop. I'm just gonna actually give this a little bend. That way my loop is centered. Then I'm just gonna wrap this around. There we go. Cool. Okay. So now if we go back to our drawing, we had a little component, um, a pendant down here, and then the rest were gonna be loose beads. So we want to make sure that this ends up somewhere over here. I'm wondering, I didn't even count my links, so I wonder if I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, okay, I do. Whew! <laughs> I didn't know if I had a even or uneven number, but it looks like it goes on this link. So that saved us a few minutes. <laughs> um, but the question is now, how are we going to connect it? So the only thing, and let's, I don't think I've got giant jump rings, unfortunately. So what I'm going to do is I am going to use wire wrapping to make this happen. Okay, and I'm just gonna get myself more of the Softflex craft wire and 22 gauge. There's that. We've connected this guy onto that successfully. So now we just can kind of pick out whatever beads and stuff we want to use where I want to put stuff. I think there might be actually enough beads in here to make this work. Oh, I guess like I'm subconsciously made the sparkly route. But the links are considerably big for any small, which all of my round nose pliers are pretty tiny because I'm used to making all of my round nose loops pretty tiny. There we go. But I really need to expand my horizon, right? There we go. Still has movement. We're in good shape. String this little guy. There we go. I could have used Sarah Ellis's technique to create just a nice clean um, edge on this. But this gives me an opportunity to potentially put a bead on and stick another bead on, and then I'm going to, whoops. Cool. Not bad for improvising, I would say. Still getting the same effect um, that I had in mind with these little bobbles going everywhere. Let's see, what do we want to connect down here? Maybe this metal piece, because it kind of coordinates with this. Plus, I just love that hammered little side bead, or a uh, spacer bead. Do this. Neat. And what do we have down here? We have this little guy. Cool, cool. Push this through bobble, so let's do something small like this little crystal guy. Perfect. You see I can get this tiniest of <laughs> a 
little simple loops from this. It's pretty astonishing. I think one of my students gave me this particular plier set back in the day. Okay. Put this on. And the last one is this guy right over here. So this might be a little bit more tricky because he's top drilled. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and secure the top drill part first. I'm going to take my craft wire, take it around to a nice 45 angle, go ahead and readjust so that my wire is now perpendicular. Bring my other wire around Squeeze both of them and then twist my short wire around over my previous one, just like that. Uh, where's my cutters? There they are. Easy enough. Because that took me a long time to figure out, I'm actually going to finish up this other half on my own, but. I'm going to post a picture onto the Sil uh, Silver Silk Silky's Facebook group page of what the rest of it looks like. But I can already tell you like this is gonna look like a fun dynamic design. You guys keep it fun and inspirational tonight and I will see you again soon. Mwah! You can find these materials, um, Capture Chain on the Silver Silk and More um, website, silversilkonline.com. Otherwise check out jessejamesbeads.com for these beautiful bead mix plus the acrylic chain I used tonight. All right, love you guys, good night.